Dear brothers and sisters in Islam, the Prophet والسلام, in a hadith, he said, you will never be able to contain people. Contain means to please. To contain people with your wealth. So contain them with your cheerful faces, smiling faces, and good manners. If you think about that hadith, Winning human bodies is easy with money. You can, anybody, your employee, you hold the paycheck, you're going to win his body. He's going to be here every day in the morning and he's going to leave at 5 o'clock. You win his body. But winning human hearts is an art. And from the hadith, we understand it can be won by two methods. One, by money. You're generous with somebody, you're very kind and help him so he loves you. And the second, by smile and good manners. And think about it. What if you have both of them? Isn't that would be wonderful? You'll be a great human being. You have money and you have the cheerful attitude and good manners. That's the true Muslim. You have all three of them. That's a true Muslim. If you don't have money, at least you have the cheerful attitude and the good manners. And if you think about it, no matter how much money you have, we cannot make everybody love us. No matter. Because if you take somebody like Bill Gates, he has, yeah, 76 billion. If he distribute his money on everybody, everybody's going to get $10. $10. It's not going to make people love him. So money cannot make people love you. When we deal with people, we deal with hearts, not bodies. When you show people your gentleness, your welcoming attitude, and care for them, you capture their hearts and become dear to them. And that's why the Prophet ﷺ in the hadith, he said, to meet your brother with a smile, a smiling face, is a charity. It's a sadaqa. Because it's a cheerful attitude. It's a welcoming attitude. Your cheerful face, your smile, would have an effect on people that no money, gifts, or words could do to everybody around you. Your cheerful attitude and good manners make them happy and feel good. So people would like to be around you. They want to help you. Abdullah ibn Harith, one of the companions, he reported, I have never seen a man who smiled as much as the messenger of Allah. Always he's welcoming. His cheerful attitude. If just imagine if he's frowning, would anybody come close to him? Everybody would stay away. But he's smiling. He's saying, welcome, come. I personally believe that your smile and good manners are better than money. Because when you have money, on the day of judgment, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to ask you, how did you earn that money? Every penny of them, how did you earn it? And Allah is going to ask you, did you give the people that you're supposed to support, did you spend on them? Did you take care of your family, your spouse, your children, your relatives? And Allah is going to ask you, how did you spend it? Did you pay zakat? So many questions are going to be asked about. But when you have a cheerful attitude and good manners, Allah is going to be pleased with it. He's not going to tell you, how did you get that cheerful attitude? How did you get those good manners? He's just going to reward you. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when you have money that's not really halal money, Allah is not going to bless it. So you will spend the money and you're not going to win the heart of the people. Still they are going to hate you. With all the money that you spent and still they are not going to like you. Jabir ibn Abdullah, he said, one of the companion, the messenger of Allah never refused to see me from the time I became Muslim. And whenever he saw me, he would smile at me. Look at the attitude. Cheerful attitude and good manners. Hearts 
cannot be won by force, wealth, beauty, or status. You cannot win the hearts with any of those, but with good manners. And remember, the Prophet ﷺ, he said, cheerful attitude, smiling face, and good manners together. So having a cheerful attitude or smiling face with not good manners doesn't mean anything. Because you can be a smiling person and be rude and insult people and be, you know, evil person, but smiling. You enjoy it. So smiling and good manners, that's what counts. The two together, they have to be together. And if you remember, there was a story about Al-Hasan wal Hussein the grandchildren of the Prophet ﷺ. When they were young men, they saw an old man coming to the masjid, a sheikh. And he walked into the masjid and he did wudu. And they looked at him and he was all messed up. He didn't know how to do wudu, ablution. So what did they do? They went to the man, both of them smiling. And they said, Oh sheikh, my brother and I we are arguing about which one of us is doing wudu exactly like the Prophet ﷺ used to do wudu. So we want you to be the judge. So the Sheikh said, fine. The first one did the wudu, beautiful wudu. The second one did wudu, identical to the first one. So the Sheikh looked at them and he said, you both did it the same way. I'm the one who screwed up. But look at the manners. They didn't walk to the sheikh and say, don't you know how to do wudu? No. Good manners. That's what counts. That's how they capture the heart of that sheikh. But if you're rude, people will walk away from you. And the Prophet ﷺ said, may Allah have mercy on the man who is easy when he buys, easy when he sells, and easy when he demands payment. A person with a good attitude, cheerful. If you go to a store, you're a nice person. You have good manners. I see some people like a restaurant, they are very rude. They yell at the waitress. They scream at them. Why? Have a cheerful attitude and have good manners. Screaming at people because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made them in that lower job than yours. It gives you the right to be rude to them. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can switch you. All of a sudden your wealth and your position may disappear. And you'll be in the same situation. So have good manners. And be cheerful with the people. And particularly people who are less than you in position or wealth. And the Prophet ﷺ said, The believer gets along with people and they feel comfortable with him. There is no goodness in the one who does not get along with people and with whom they do not feel comfortable. So a good Muslim, people has to be comfortable around him. And you notice in all the hadith, the Prophet ﷺ is saying people. He's not saying Muslims. People. It's very important that you understand that. Because a Muslim is good with everybody. Not only with Muslim and bad with non-Muslim. We're good with everybody because that's what, what our religion orders us to do. And if you notice, he's saying with people. Because some people have seen them. They are nice, good manners and very, you know, gentle with somebody who's rich. Or somebody who has a position. And then when they deal with somebody who doesn't have the wealth or doesn't have a position, you see a different human being. Rude inconsiderate, looking down on people, but that's not the Muslim. You are like that with everybody, rich, poor, powerful, weak, Muslim, non-Muslim, doesn't matter. I read one time a story that was very interesting about a person who lived in Medina. The person was going, he heard Salat al-Dhuhr, the Adhan, and he was going to make prayer in the masjid of the Prophet ﷺ. And he passed by a farmer that was on a palm tree, working on the palm tree. So he looked at him and he said, didn't you hear the adhan? 
You should come down to go to prayer. So the man said, okay, okay. The man looked at him again and said to the farmer, you should come down now. You're going to miss the prayer. Are you a donkey? So the man cut a branch from the palm tree and said, you calling me donkey? Wait, I'm coming down. The man covered his face and took off. Then the Adhan, the Asr, came. And the Adhan came. And the same man passed by the farmer. And he was on the top of the palm tree. But this time he said to him, It seems that you are preoccupied with work. And perhaps you didn't notice that Adhan for Asr prayer. The Adhan has been called and the Iqama is about to be given. Perhaps you should get down, relax a little and get ready for prayer. After the prayer, you can get on with your work again. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keep you healthy and bless your crops. The man said, inshallah, inshallah, and he started to come down. Then when he came, da came down, he went to the man and shook his hand warmly and said to him, I would like to thank you for your excellent manners. As for the one who passed by me at Dhuhr time, I wish I could see him and show him who's the donkey. The same person, in one scenario, he showed bad manners. And he's inviting him to do prayer. In the second scenario, he showed him good manners. Big difference. That's how people love you. The man loved him. He shook his hand, very happy with his manners. But we have to understand because there is some people who confuse the love of people for their position and their wealth with the love of people for themselves. They confuse the two. That's why a lot of people who are in power position, president of company, vice president, or a, you know, in government position and all of that, those people, when they leave the job, a lot of them, they have depression. Because all of a sudden, people are not around them. The people that always were knocking on their door and smiling at their faces are gone. I knew the president of a company, a major corporation. And every day, whenever he wakes up in the morning, the phone is ringing. He comes home, the phone is ringing. All the time, people who just want to say hello, people who want something, all the time the phone is ringing. When he is sick, you walk to his house and you think you walked into a flower shop. Basket of flowers everywhere, boxes of chocolate everywhere. When he traveled, before traveling, everybody is calling him, wishing him a good trip, and hope to, to you have fun, all of that. When he comes back, phone doesn't stop ringing, people welcoming him back, it's great to have you back. And then he retired. The telephone went dead. Nobody calling. When he comes sick, nobody visit him. He travels, nobody want to know about it. He thought that the people loved him. But unfortunately, he realized the hard way that people really loved his position and his power. And that's all they cared about. But him? No. To summarize what I'm talking about regarding people loving your position, we have a saying back home. And the saying says, when the donkey of the mayor died, everybody in the village attended the funeral. And when the mayor died, nobody attended the funeral. This is exactly what I'm talking about. Remember, do people love you because of you or the love what you can, they can get out from you? That's a big difference. If that's all they love, those are not people that you care about. You should not. Look for the one that loves you. Because when you position your go away, your wealth will disappear. They're going to be still around you. They're not going to walk away and forget you. Good manners does not have to be something big. It could be simply a kind word, a helping hand, or even a smile. 
people will continue to remember you even if you lose your position or your wealth. And what does it take? Really nothing much. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not forget it. And it will come back to you in this life and later on. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in the Quran, وَقُولُوا لِلنَّاسِ حُسْنًا And speak kindly to people. It's not that only to some Muslim or to the rich and famous. No. To people, he said. للناس, all people. We should speak kindly to them. That's the order of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it's the same order that the Prophet والسلام, is telling us. Be kind to people. Speak in good manners. Be cheerful. Get people to like you. You, not your position, not your money. I'll give you an example. Let's assume you work at a bank. And you walk in, the bank has a party, and you walk into the party. And you meet three people. The first one, he will shake your hand indifferently and very coldly and say, welcome. That's it. The second one is on the phone. So he's not even looking at you. He doesn't show respect. He doesn't show anything. He just extends his hand and shake your hand and that's it. The third one, when he sees you, immediately he gets up, smile, and shake your hand warmly and say, welcome. I'm glad to see you and talk a little bit with you, even though he never met you before and you don't know each other. And then let's assume that the next day in the bank, all three of them, each one of them is coming to you because they have a problem and they need your help. There is no doubt that you will go out of your way to help the third man because he captured your heart with his smile and good manners. There is no way you will help him. The other two, let him wait. Uh, I don't know, you come back tomorrow. And to the same people? No. But the difference is the manners and attitude. You capture, they capture your heart. A lot of people think about good manners and cheerful attitude and cheerful face with dealing with people. But there is something extremely important that we have to apply this to. Very important when we're dealing with our children. A lot of people think of stranger, but our children, it's very critical. I heard that many times from parents saying, my children talk to their friends. They don't tell me anything. They tell their friends. We don't remember that a lot of parents all the time they're criticizing their children. That's all they do, criticizing them. Try to understand them. Deal with them with good manners with kindness, not anger. Listen to them and try to understand them. Win over their hearts and break down barriers between you and your children. I'll give you an example of situation, two attitudes. You're watching the game, basketball game, the last quarter, football game, last quarter, whatever. You're watching it and you're Looking, you're so excited about it, you're watching it. Your child walks in, your son, your daughter. Dad, I got an A. You tell him, okay, why don't you go clean your room? Imagine the same scenario. Your son or daughter walks in, and Dad, I got an A. You turn off the TV, I'm so proud of you. I'm so glad that you got an A. I knew always you can do it. What do you think your child is going to do? Who is he going to go and talk to? He's going to go to talk to his friend? No. He's going to come and talk to you all the time. He's going to share his secret. He's going to share his problem with you. Because you captured his heart. You captured his heart with your cheerful attitude and your good manners. We have to do that with our children, with our spouses. We have to do that. We try to do it with the strangers, but you have to start with your home. 
You cannot start with a stranger. Start with your home. And if you're successful, then carry on with the outside. And it's very important because it's dangerous. If their friends are the ones who are able to win their hearts and not you. Because remember, they, when they are in trouble, and they will be in trouble, when they are in trouble, they are going to run to their friends. And their friends may give them an advice that will be destructive and may ruin their life. And they will not come to you. And you're going to wonder, why he didn't come and ask me? Because of your manners, your attitude. That's why he didn't come and ask you. And that's how he got into trouble. Because of you. So show the good manners and cheerful attitude to your children, to your spouse, before showing it to the outside. Some people are going to say, how can we do that? Somebody is going to say, I cannot. And my answer is, at least try. Try that. And somebody may say, I don't know how. No, you do, you do know. The Prophet ﷺ told us in hadith, knowledge is only gained through learning. And leniency is only gained through persistence. What he's telling us in this hadith, that everything is learned through practice. Everything. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not ask us to change our behavior or manners if we cannot change it. If it's something we're born with, you know, I'm born that tall, that short, whatever, I cannot change it. But Allah, when He's asking us to change our manners, it means it can be done, but it needs practice. If you're a basketball player and you want to be the best, how are you going to do it? Practice. Every day, several hours every day, you're going to be one of the great players. If you're a doctor, how you're going to be a great doctor? Practice. If you're a plumber, how you're going to be a great plumber? Practice. Anything, practice. That's what the Prophet ﷺ is telling us. Practice. You're going to be able to be the best. And you know, try it first at home. Start with your family, your children, your spouse, and more important, with your parents. Try it with your parents. Try that cheerful attitude with your parents and that good manner. I hear parents telling me, my son comes from work or my daughter, and they go into the room and lock the door, they don't come out. Is that good manners? Is your parents just a, a bank? They spend on you and that's it, there is nothing back? Good manners. And try it in your company, with your boss, with your colleague, with people working for you. Try it in stores, try it in banks, try it at airport. Wherever you are, and particularly when you have a problem, try to use your cheerful attitude and good manners. Try it even with cops. I tried it one time with cops, I tried it many times, but one time it worked. I tried it with a cop. He stopped me for driving at 40 miles an hour in a 25 mile zone. And I smiled and I talked to him in a nice way. And at the end he said, okay, I'm gonna give you a warning. Don't push the gas pedal too much. Thank you and walked away, it worked. Even if it doesn't work, it's gonna make you feel good. So try it with everything. And you know, if you look at it, a lot of problems that are happening on the road now, when you hear about road rage and people pulling guns and shooting each other and all of that, it's because of good, uh, bad manners. Many times I don't pay attention and I cut off somebody. If, you know, the minute I notice, I wave my hand and smile to them. 80% of the time, they're fine. But some people, they get angry and they cut off the other one, chase them and all of that and then end up with a gun being pulled, somebody stabbing somebody, somebody beating somebody. Not good manners. Good manners let any problem move. Share your smiles and good manners with everybody. So when you need help, people you met before will remember you and will help you. And people you never met before will be motivated to help you and solve your problems. And remember, when you are successful in capturing people's hearts and, their, and win their love, it will bring you great happiness 
in this world and great rewards on the day of judgment, insha'Allah.